Alright guys, welcome back to another What the Filament video. On today's video we are going to go ahead and assemble the Prusa MMU-2S that we uh, reviewed and unboxed uh, in the last video. So let's go ahead without further ado, get straight to it. So we have a number of sections that we have to work with that we unboxed in the last video. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start though with the extruder body. The extruder body is probably the easiest part of this because it only has a few pieces as you can see right here. We'll be removing a couple of the sensors in here and rejiggering them so that the uh, MMU can put the uh, PTFE tube in the top rather than direct filament feed so that it can run up here to the top to the 2S. All right guys, there we have it. The extruder upgrade is complete. Uh, I will say during that process, you didn't have to disassemble the entire hot end if you don't want to. Um, I went ahead and did it just to kind of make sure everything was retightened. But one thing I will say is when you're putting this screw in right here at the top, you're definitely going to want to screw that in and kind of thread it once before you put it onto the extruder because once it's on the extruder, it becomes a little bit difficult. Um, I know in Prusa's instructions, they went ahead and um, said to take the entire sensor cable off so you could screw it in off to the side of the printer. I thought that was a little more disassembly than necessary, but if you go ahead and you just um, get that in there uh, before you go on to the extruder body, then you can make sure that uh, it's threaded and goes on there well once it's up here. Um, the next thing I would say too is it's never a bad idea in these early stages to, let me grab some filament here, to make sure everything is lined up and just get a piece of filament and stick it in there, make sure it goes all the way down inside so that you know before you get any further that it's aligned. All right, on to the next part. All right guys. Now on to the next step in the process, uh, the idler body. So the idler body is about 15 steps. Hopefully it should be a little bit easier than that uh, extruder assembly was. Uh, not that it was too bad, but the way I decided to do it, keeping all the cabling on the printer itself made it a little more difficult, but a little bit less time consuming. So here we go. Here we have our completed idler assembly. So that really wasn't too hard, it only took a few minutes. I would say that um, the one thing that I noticed that I would check if I were you would be when you're inserting these, they have these little retaining bars that you put inside of here. And the print themselves, you know, oftentimes when you print uh, on a 3D printer, the bridging's not the best. And, you know, that's true of anybody, including Perusa. And sometimes when you're putting those bars in, they can be really tight. So sometimes if you just check to clean, make sure that these little holes are cleaned out. Um, that So when you're putting these in and putting in the little retaining rod, uh, it's not as difficult to put in. Uh, the second thing I would say is when you're installing the idler motor here, on the back side, you have some screws that sit in the retaining, um, sitting here to retain the motor. They only, I'm not using the Prusa um, hex keys, but I'm using my own here. Um, when you're doing it, I would say on these back ones here, if you have a ball headed hex driver, that makes all the difference in the world because to get in here is a real nice tight angle and that ball really makes it easy to get in there and tight. So that is that. Um, do note that it only spins, it doesn't spin in full 360, it does have an end stop right here. This end stop stops both sides, so when you're spinning this idler body here, be aware that it does 
hit that. And so that is not at your idler body catching on anything or anything misaligned. That is by design right there. So on to the next piece. Here we are with the next piece in the MMU assembly, the pulley body. So the pulley body is kind of looks like the main part of the installation or the assembly of the unit. Uh, it has the most complex parts. I'm looking here at their website and it shows that it's 35 steps, which is about twice as much as the idler body. The idler body only took me, I don't know, 20 minutes or so max. And so I'm hoping this won't take too long. Um, but well, like I said, we'll go through this and at the end, um, I'll let you know what I think about it and uh, you know if I have any tips for your assembly. All right, let's get to it. just finished up our um, main body here uh, not too bad of an assembly a um, couple finicky parts the main complaint I have about this one is the uh, pulley motor right here on the back they have these two uh, cutouts to put in the screws so unlike the first part right here where this one was it kind of gave you enough room to kind of get in there and it was wide enough this part however these are real tight notches and I wasn't able to get in here with my um, regular hex key I wasn't able to get in there with Prusa supplied hex key what I ended up eventually having to do was take my nice uh, hex key right here with the ball end and I ended up having to cut off some of the sheathing because it kept getting caught once I cut off the sheathing I was able to get in there to screw that in but most people out of the box may not have that kind of hex key and so it's uh, pretty frustrating that Prusa would do something like that. They should really re redesign that. Well, sorry, not that one. They should redesign this one. Make it a little bit more accessible. Make at least make these a little bit wider so something like this would fit. Or you know, even their plain hex key might fit a little bit better. But that's my main complaint with it. Um, other than that, not too bad of assembly. Um, kind of fun. Always fun when it comes together and you kind of start to see the final product starting to emerge. So. Yeah, on to the next part, electronics. All right, guys, here we are. <clears throat> on to the sixth step in the assembly process. We are on the electronics. Uh, it says here in the instructions, it's a 32 step process, a little bit longer than the assembler body was over here, or the idler body was over here. Um, it says it's gonna be difficult, hopefully not too difficult, um, the last couple steps haven't been too bad so we'll see how this goes I know wiring can get difficult so that's probably what they're referring to um, before we get started I do love this little control board nice black stealth look it's fun that they have this little uh, sheep on here just like they did on the box I was trying to see if I could find it on the assembly unit but I did not see it so in case I was missing it it looks like that was just a box design and not on the actual extruder or the actual uh, MMU itself. So, bummer, but hey, at least we have one more right here, so that's always fun. All right, on to the build. assembled MMU uh, that wasn't too bad didn't take me too long um, I have tried my best to follow their wiring instructions as far as cable management goes um, but I found that kind of bringing the wires over here and attaching them like that with a couple clip um, zip ties 
It was a little bit better. They kind of wanted you to bring it around here and have it sitting here. I kind of wanted everything as much as possible out of the way of the drive unit just because less chance of having things get in the way. Same thing here. That's why I went ahead and zip tied this here. I know if I ever need to open it up, I'll have to cut that zip tie, but I'm hoping I won't have to do that very often. Um, the next thing was uh, when I was putting in these PTFE tubes, uh, I just wanted to make sure when you put these in, I kind of screwed it down a little bit at a time. I didn't want to bunch any of the tubes and I didn't want to bind anything. So I kind of, you know, like you would with like a car tire or anything like that, I kind of went back and forth crisscrossing to kind of lower the whole thing down a little bit at a time because I wanted there to be nice even pressure so that there wasn't any binding with filament going on. Um, the next thing after that is we're gonna go ahead and mount it up to the printer. Um, but for the time being, uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera just because it's gonna be a little bit um, ungainly to try to get that on camera. So until then, uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.